Remember this? <laughs> I've still got it. Got a drone in it today because it'll keep the batteries uh, from being too exposed to the cold. And I've still got these as well. They're a bit worn now, but I've had them for about five years. So all of my sleeping stuff is in here. Sleeping bag, uh, air mattress, a warm top, uh, a pillow and a t-shirt for the pillow so i've put it all in this bag so it's a pump sack although i've got an electric pump with me just in case something happens i've got a pump sack for it and i just use that as a waterproof bag seen me doing this before so this is my spare t-shirt I bring with me and I'm just going to wrap it around the pillow and the mattress and it holds the pillow in uh, in place rather than it moving around all night So that should hold the pillow rather than it moving around because there isn't a, a strap on this one. It's a great pillow, but there's just no strap on it. So I just put the uh, spare t-shirt around there. It's great, works a treat. Got a bit of a gamble tonight. Um, this this is a quilt. Now, I've never used a quilt before. Um, this is the Firma Rest Vespa 20. So it's, uh, it's got a comfort rating of zero and a limit of minus six. So the 20 is 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, but I'm a cold sleeper. I've never slept in a quilt before. And I dare say it's probably just gonna be below zero tonight or around that mark. Now I've got it on an Xtherm uh, air mattress. So it, the air mattress should be fine for this. But um, it'd be interesting to see if I keep warm. As like I said, I'm, I'm not a warm sleeper. So if I stay warm in this, in this weather, then it's a pretty good sleeping bag, but we'll find out in the morning. <laughs> okay, so for my tea tonight, I'm having my, as I call it, if you've seen one of my older videos, uh, my death row meal. So this is the meal I would have as my final meal if I was on death row. Oh, well, I'm never on death row, but... Um, and it, all it is, is quite simple. It's uh, mashed potatoes, sausages. Now, these were frozen when I left the house. They're still pretty frozen now. Uh, and beans, so mashed potato, sausage and beans. I'm easy to keep, to keep uh, happy, so... It's lovely, lovely here. It's got about... Um, 45 minutes of light left. There's barely any wind at all, but it is very cold. Now, I had a, one of these wind things, I'm not even going to try and pronounce it, and app something. Um, I've never had one before, but uh, it'd be interesting to see what the wind uh, comes out 
as you're also, it's also got the temperature on here. Uh, there's barely any wind at the moment. It's about two mile an hour. I don't know how accurate they are. It's saying it's two degrees at the moment. You can see it's colder than that. <laughs> It only got up to 15 mile an hour. It's gone now. It's just a quick uh, blast. I'll try it later. And there's the view from the tent door. That's Trivan. Trivan's a, a special place for me. Um, it, this area around here, it was like a, it was like our playground when we were. Some teenagers. Um, I used to come here with two of my friends, or I met, I met him in the, I met them in the army cadets. Um, so we sort of grew up together, and we all joined the services at the same time. So um, I joined the Welsh Guards. My friend Mike joined the Royal Engineers, and my other friend Craig joined the Royal Marines. And we sort of split up and went our own ways. We kept in touch. We used to write letters to each other. We used to have these envelopes uh, in the army called Blueies, which were free. And we used to post letters to each other. I remember sending letters to Craig when he was in Belfast, uh, and I was over the other side of Northern Ireland at the time, near London Derry. But we used to come, uh, we used to come climbing here. We used to go rock climbing, abseiling, um, all all up the mountains round here. Uh, it said it was one big playground for us, um, but sadly, um, Craig uh, took his own life in 2008. There's a, there's a bridge down near the the hostel by the uh, Ogwin car park there. Um, loads of you have probably walking over the wooden bridge. It's just as you sort of start the walk. And if you walk over it and drop down to the river um, on the left-hand side, if you go towards the mountain, if you look closely, you'll see a little brass plaque with a Royal Marines cap badge, um, and Craig's name is on that. Um, with some words from his family. So my friend Craig's ashes are actually scattered on the top of Trivan. Um, so that's one reason why it's very special for me. But also um, about 12, 13 years ago, uh, one of our friends, Tony, um, Tony had some slight learning, uh, learning disabilities and he was scared of heights, but he always wanted to go up Trivan. So we took him up one day. There was a group of us that went up and uh, Tony struggled at the top with the heights, but um, he crawled on his hands and knees and we managed to get a photograph. I'll try and find it for you, uh, of Tony touching the Adam and Eve stones on the top of Trivan. Um, but sadly, 12 months later, I had a phone call and um, Tony had passed away, He'd caught a virus, um, and it very quickly took his life. So um, just over 12 months after we got Tony to the top, I was um, I was sort of asked if I'd take some of his family up again with Tony's ashes. So Tony's ashes are also scattered on the top of Trivan. So um, this this is a very special place for me. I, I don't film myself when I go up Trivan um, for obvious reasons, but I do like coming here. Um, I do spend a lot of time around here. There's quite a few films I've done in this area, but I always look up at Trivan. I remember. My, my two friends, Craig and Tony. I don't know whether you'll be able to see him there, but there's a, there's a group of about four or five. They sound like young people because they're, they're screaming, doing all sorts. But um, there's probably only about 15 20 minutes left of daylight so i'm hoping they've got a head torch or they're going to be uh, they're going to have some issues getting down off here so i'll keep an ear out for them Look 
going to believe this. They're actually stripping off and I think they're going to go for a swim. <laughs> Crazy. It's actually a lot darker than it's appearing on the camera. Never had these before. The brilliant uh, going from Tesco. They've gone up uh, probably about a pound, but honestly, you wouldn't know that they weren't real mashed potato. The lovely they are, like Ida Hoen.
mashed potatoes done. All I do is just add them into the water. I'll quickly get these off. Turn it down a bit. Thankfully the mash is still warm. There we go. Mashed potato, sausage and beans. <laughs> Starving. You've got to try, if you've never tried these Idaho and you've got to try them. It's just like mashed potato you'd make at home. Absolutely lovely. Mm. There's my death row meal. Coming down there with a head torch. It's almost pitch black now. one degree so it's it's probably going to be around about zero as the night goes on that's inside the tent yeah that's inside the tent so it's probably a little bit colder outside so it'll be a good test of the sleeping bag well, that's me all fed and watered uh, i'm in the quilt wish me luck um, all I'm going to be sleeping in is this thin fleece top. Um, I've got leggings and I've got my socks and those soft boots that you see in my other films there. So it's about zero degrees now. It's probably going to go a couple of degrees colder than that, um, which is below the limit of this bag. And I'm a cold sleeper, so it'd be interesting to see if I'm warm tonight or whether I have to grab my warm top to put on as well. But I'll let you know in the morning. But for now, good night. Morning. 
it went down to about uh, minus 1.5 I think last night I thought it would go a little bit colder than that um, and it was it was really blowing a gale at some points I think it was about two in the morning um, really strong wind I wasn't going to stick my hand out and measure it because I was half asleep um, but yeah I, I wasn't cold I didn't need to put anything on other than this fleece which is what I had on anyway um, yeah so although it's rated at zero and I'm a cold sleeper it's fine absolutely fine no problem at all it's a lot easier turning over um, because I tend to get tangled up in a sleeping bag and normally the hood ends up covering my face and all sorts but obviously this hasn't got a hood I did cinch it down so the neck was was tight around me um, but no the only thing that was getting cold was obviously my mouth and nose because I had this hat I basically pulled this hat down over my eyes and just had my uh, nose and mouth covered so that was the only thing that felt a little bit cold but no I'm really chuffed with it right <laughs> time for a brew The wind is it's like little gusts that um, I've just measured now, and, and they go up to about 22, 23. They're not that bad, um, but because it's so cold, it just gets straight into your fingers. Um, bloody freezing, I didn't have my gloves on, um, but yeah, it just bites straight in. So this brew will go down well. I think, it, I think it either rained a little bit or it was like a, a bit of sleet in the night, but not for long. It was either that or the wind was blowing some of the, the snow up o over the tent, but it seems dry out there now. I've got absolutely no condensation in the tent at all, not not in the fly, not in the inner or anything, which is probably due to the wind. I, I did have all the vents like fully open on this, um, so that probably helped, yeah, because the snow anywhere, condensation anywhere. Just thinking of those lads last night, I mean, it was, God knows what time we got down to the car park, <laughs> jumping and swimming in the lake that time of night, and it is absolutely freezing. It must be mad.
that was a great little camp. Uh, it's not far to Kai, it's only about uh, two kilometres, but uh, it's bitterly cold, so I'm leaving on the top of the dial. As I head back down the wall, we just take it off. So, uh, yeah, great to get back out, and uh, great to be out in the snow for a change. Thank you for joining me.